How to buy your first or next rental property with none of your own money. Have you been wanting to buy rental properties, but you just don't have a lot of extra cash laying around? I know that was the position I was in back when I started a few years ago, but I was able to overcome it, build this large portfolio worth millions of dollars, and it's completely changed our lives. And today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how I did it without having to use our own money. Let's go. When I started buying rental properties in 2018, the reason was because I wanted freedom. Everybody I talk to has the same desire. The root of however they word it is, I want freedom, time freedom, and financial freedom. And I knew based on history, based on data, that people who have bought real estate and held on to it for a long time had no other choice but to get wealthy. And so being the simple guy that I am, I said, well, let me try this asset that has made all these other people wealthy because if it's working for them, it ought to work for me. And sure enough, here we are five years later, I bought my first property in 2018. It's 2023 now. My wife and I have become multimillionaires. We've reached financial freedom and we've reached time freedom all because we bought real estate and the majority of it we bought without using our own money, which I'll tell you about here in a second. But why, why even deeper than freedom did I wanna buy real estate or do other people wanna buy real estate? Like what are the actual nuts and bolts outside of just we want to achieve freedom? Well, I think there's six pillars of real estate that when combined is the greatest concoction known to man and ultimately leads to that desired outcome of freedom. Pillar number one is leverage, which we're gonna talk a lot about in this video, is we can buy this very expensive asset with little to no of our own money. That is almost impossible in every other asset class. But within real estate, we are able to leverage that, which is only going to increase our returns. Second, we have what's called forced appreciation. It's just a fancy word for we can rehab a house, make it look pretty, and it's instantly worth more. Third is we're going to have traditional appreciation, which just means over time, based on data, based on history, that property values are going to go up over time. Next, we have what everybody likes, cash flow, baby, cash flow. That's what's going to be paying you every month. You buy these properties, your tenants are paying down your rent, and you are getting cash flow in your pocket. That's going to be what's left over after all your mortgage and expenses are paid. You get to hold on to that. Next is you're gonna have what we call tenant pay down. So the tenants are going to be paying down the debt on your loan for you. So we've leveraged, we've used somebody else's money to buy this property, and now we have tenants in place and they're actually gonna pay off that debt for us. It's amazing. And then all the while, the last pillar, number six, all while all this other stuff is going on, we're getting the appreciation, we're getting the forced appreciation, we're getting the cash flow. We also get tax benefits. And there are so many tax benefits that come with owning real estate, such as depreciation, write-offs. You can do things like 1031 exchanges, all different types of opportunities of taxes with real estate. And so when you look at everything that it offers and you start applying it into your life, you really have no other choice, like I said earlier, to become wealthy because it is just this huge concoction of these benefits working together in your favor. And as you own these properties over time and they work together longer and longer and longer and they compound, next thing you know, you look back and you say, wow, I started this journey just a few years ago and now I'm a multimillionaire. How did that happen? Well, it happened because you said, yes, you took the step, you went and bought the property and you let time do its thing. But a lot of people struggle and run into the roadblock of, I don't have enough money to put a down payment, a traditional down payment of 20% on a real estate deal. And I think that's a very valid concern from folks who want to get into real estate but that haven't quite yet. I know it was for me. So my journey's a little bit different. When I started in 2018, I bought my first two properties, putting 20% down on each, and I rehabbed them both. By the time I got done with both of those properties, every dime I had saved up was around $50,000. After putting the down payment on both of those properties and rehabbing them, my money was gone. Now, I had two properties, two rental properties, super excited about that, but I wanted to scale because I knew the more properties that I could add to my portfolio and let it sit over time, it was only going to expedite my journey to wealth. And so this is where I hit a crossroads and said, I have to find a way to buy properties 
without using my own funds. Because if I keep waiting to use my own funds, I'm only going to be able to buy one, maybe two properties a year. And that's just not going to cut it. And so this is where I learned the power of using what we call other people's money or OPM. And the way that we're going to use other people's money is two different ways. You're going to do it through what we call private lenders, and we can do it through what's called hard money lenders. And so private lenders, I want you to think of somebody in your network that is wealthy or that is well off. They don't have to be super rich, but they've done a good job. They've stayed out of bad debt. They've got a good savings in place. They've got money in the stock market. They have, maybe they have money in a 401k. It's somebody that you know has got their finances buttoned up and they like to make money in smart, conservative ways. These can be your friends, your family, your coworkers. Uh, you can do you. It can be other investors that you meet. It doesn't matter. It's just when we say other people's money in the private lender space, it's just people that you meet in your network who are willing to lend to you. And I know it may seem foreign to you right now and the thing, and you think, I don't have anybody off the top of mind that I can do that. That's okay. You don't have to know them today, but you have, I guarantee you, everybody listening to this has somebody in their network, whether immediate or whether you'd have to chase your network down that has somebody who would lend you money to do your real estate deals. I actually put a guide together. It's completely free. I think it's 20 or 21 pages. It's called my private lender guide. I'm going to put a link to it in the show notes to make sure you guys can access that. It'll tell you all about finding private lenders, how to go about it, how to have those conversations with them so that you can get those folks in your corner. Second, we can use what's called hard money lending. So private lending are going to be those people who are in your network, right? Your friends, family, coworkers, like people that you know, they don't lend for a living. Well, then hard money lenders are going to be lenders that do what we call bridge loans, short-term loans to allow you to buy properties, and they do it for a living. And just hang with me. All this is going to come together. I'm going to tell you the strategy to use when talking about private and hard money lenders. I just want to give you the backstory. So hard money lenders, they lend for a living. And so oftentimes they will loan 90% of purchase and rehab on a property. And so then we only have to come up with 10% to get to the closing table. Well, where do you think we get that 10% from? If we don't want to use our money or we don't have that money, we go to private lenders and get them to fund the 10% needed to get to the closing table. So then our hard money lenders who do this for a living, they lend all the time and they lend based on how the property is going to perform, will then lend us the remaining 90%, but not just 90% of the purchase we need, but also any rehab we need. Well, I mentioned when you work with private money lenders and hard money lenders, I said the word bridge loan. That's right. When you're working with these folks, whether it be somebody in your network or whether it be a hard money lender, they're usually only going to loan you out this money to buy this property and potentially rehab it for 365 days. Over the course of that 365 days, you're going to pay interest only payments every month for however long you have the loan out. So you don't have to keep the loan out for a year. If you get your project done in three to four months and you pay them back, well, then you're done. Okay, but every month that you have their money in your pocket using it, they're going to charge you interest. And when we look at private to hard money lending, you're going to pay somewhere between 8 to 15% interest every month. The beautiful thing is we pay interest only payments. It's a pay to play. They're giving us their money to fund these deals. We are paying them interest in return. Now, there's different ways you can structure paying the interest. Now, when you're doing it with a hard money lender, you're going to pay them interest every month. But a lot of times with private money lenders, I will set it up to where I accrue interest so I don't pay them monthly. And then I only have to pay them their interest back at the end of my project after I have either sold my property or refinanced it. So let's talk about that because you're probably thinking, all right, these people are loaning me this money at high interest for a year. How do I pay them back? How do I get my money back to them? By the way, when you're paying somebody 11, 12, 13, 14, 15% to borrow their money, somebody who's never lent on a real estate deal before, you have to understand that they're usually making eight, nine, maybe 10% wherever their money's parked right now. If they got it in a savings account, they're making way less. And so you're able to pitch to them for those of you who are skeptics and say nobody would do this, well, I have people lined up to do it for me all the time now because of the reputation I built over time. But when I first started, I had to chase people down just like you guys are going to have to do if you're going to go on this journey, but it's totally worth it. And if you can show them, hey, you are going to make 12, 13, 14% 
And the goal is to have you this back in four or five or six months. And you do that with them one time, let them read the rewards. They're going to be calling you asking, how can I lend to you again? When do you have your next deal? Because that's very good money and it's backed by a very strong asset of real estate. So let's talk through the strategy of how do we deploy their money and then how do we pay them back but keep our rental property? That seems crazy. Glad you asked. Let me break it down for you. We are going to do what's called the Burr Method. B-R-R-R-R, -R -R -R. buy, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat. Now, I know that probably sounds absolutely crazy. You're like, what in the world is this man talking about? Well, let me break it down for you. We're going to start with buy, okay? The first B of the burr, first and only B of the burr. Buy is we are going to buy a distressed, usually undervalued property with other people's money, okay? So we're going to go to the seller and we're gonna buy it from the seller, and we're gonna use either hard money mixed with private money, okay? Because we said hard money is gonna lend us 90% of purchase and rehab we need. So we gotta find that other 10%. So we're either gonna use hard money in our money, hard money in private lender money, hard money in a HELOC that we came up with, okay? If we're wanting to do it where we don't use any of our money at all, even to get into the deal, then we're gonna use private money lending to fund that other 10%. Or maybe we use a private lender to fund the entire deal. So you, somebody in your network, mom, dad, friend, family member, lends you the entire purchase price and the, tire, and the entire amount that you need for rehab. It just depends what your private lender is willing to do. A lot of private lenders, when they're first starting, don't necessarily want to write a $200,000 check to a newbie. So it's easy to get them into the game, putting them as the down payment for a hard money loan because you may only need them to fund you fifteen dollars to $20,000 compared to going and asking them for $200,000. So however we put it together, we're going to buy the house with other people's money, either through private money, hard money, or a mix of both. Once we've closed on the property, then we're gonna go and rehab it. So I just told you, we've got the rehab money from either our private money lender or our hard money lender. So then we're gonna use that money and we're gonna make this property pretty. And when we do that, and if you think back to those six pillars that I talked about earlier in this video, we're gonna do what's called forced appreciation. So because we took this ugly property and we made it pretty, we have forced appreciated it or made this property worth more instantly because we bought it undervalued and ugly and made it pretty. Bought it undervalued and ugly, now it's rehabbed and in good condition. Once we have finished rehabbing, we're going to go and we're gonna get a tenant in place. So we're gonna go find us a renter. Now after we've got a renter in place or while we're marketing to get a renter in place, we are going to go to a small local bank and get a new long-term loan on the house. This is how we're going to pay our private lender back. So. Here's how it works. After you've rehabbed the property, you're gonna to go to a small local bank. You're gonna say, hey, I just purchased and rehabbed this property. I wanna order an appraisal on it and get into a stable long-term rental mortgage with you guys through what's called a cash out refinance. And so what the bank is gonna do is they're gonna order an appraisal on that property. An appraiser is going to go to that property and say, this house is worth blank amount. So let's just say that an appraiser goes to a house and says it's worth $100,000 for easy math, okay? The bank then is gonna say, okay, great, Jaron, your house is worth $100,000 now per the appraiser. We will lend you 80% and we'll do what's called a cash out refinance. So you gotta remember, in the bank's eyes, that property is owned free and clear. Okay, because you bought it with private money or hard money. So they don't have a mortgage on it. So what they're gonna do when they go and get that appraisal is they are going to write you a check for 80% of the new appraised value. Okay, so in our scenario, the new appraised value is 100,000. The bank's gonna write you a check for 80. You're gonna deposit that into your bank account and then you're going to go and pay back your hard money lender and or your private money lender they have all their money back plus any fees. You now have a property and you didn't have to put a dime of your own money in. Now, the key to this is being able to buy properties undervalued on the front end. So after we've put the rehab in, the new appraised value when we get 80% back is enough to pay these lenders back. And if you do it right, then you're going to be able to do that. Now, there may be some times where you leave a couple grand in the deal. Maybe you didn't get the appraisal that you needed quite on the back end. And so now you've 
pay back your private money lenders and your hard money lenders, but you had to have come out of pocket $2,000 to do so. That happens. But on the flip side, there are other scenarios where you will get money back at closing. I can show you two examples right now, 1012 Johns Avenue. I bought this property for $90,000. I put $32,000 in it. So I'm all in at 122. After the rehab, I went to my small local bank. They ordered an appraisal. It appraised for $170,000. So they wrote me a check for 80% of that, which was $136,000. So I was all in at 122. Bank wrote me a check for 136. After my fees to my private lender, I owed them 125. So I got a check for 136 from the bank. I owe my private lender 125, pay them back, and I still had $11,000 left over in my pocket. I did this another time, not as quite on a grander scale of $11,000, but with 622 Cary Street. Me and a partner bought this property, did the Burr method, and at the end of closing, we got $2,000 back. And you're saying, why? Well, because the appraisal came back so high that it gave us enough money on the cash out refinance to not only be able to pay back our private money lenders and hard money lenders, but also give us extra cash to put into our pocket. Now you may not do that on every deal because you need to make sure if you're gonna pull that much money out, the rents need to be able to keep up to make sure the mortgage is being covered and you're making cash flow, but you guys get the point. This strategy has literally taken me and my family from broke in 2018 worth negative $10,000 to multimillionaires and a couple with four kids under six years old who live in the middle of nowhere, South Carolina to complete financial and time freedom. It works, it's been tried and tested. I personally have repeated it over and over and over again. I teach hundreds of students literally every day on how to do this and they are repeating it over and over and over again. It is a wealth builder. And you may think, man, this just seems so hard to get a lender in my corner. I know that things that are new can seem daunting and seem out of reach. I'm telling you that it's not. Money is plentiful. It is, a, it is a resource that obviously can deplete, but there's so much of it around. And so the key to all of this is being able to find good deals. If you learn how to find good deals, the money will come pouring in. I'm telling you, I just had to search and search and search for my first private lender. Now when I have deals, I have them lining up and I have to choose which one I want to use because you build that trust over time. And I'm telling you, if I can do it, you can do it too. And I believe in you. I have faith in you. And I'm excited to hear about your journey. And if you guys want help doing this, you want to join a community, you want myself and our team in your corner, let me know. I would love to help you guys out. We got an entire community where we teach people how to do this, plus every other strategy to buy residential real estate with the goal of getting our students to financial freedom. There's a link below to set up a call with myself or our team to talk about the Rental Academy. Would absolutely love to talk to you to see where you're at in your journey to see if we can help you guys and take you to that next step and ultimately help you create the life of your dreams. If you thought this video was helpful, I'm gonna have lots more coming out that's gonna teach you everything you need to know about investing in real estate. And so if you subscribe, it'll notify you when I release a new video. Also check one of these videos out that we already have. They are there for your value and to help you on your real estate journey. I'm excited for you guys. Go crush it and start buying real estate using other people's money.